the HTMX for Reactive Developers video is a big hit. Thank you for that. But a lot of you are like, hey, I also use Alpine in addition to HTMX. Can you do a video on that? Well, absolutely. Let's go create a Wordle clone using Astro, HTMX, Alpine, and Tailwind. Let's get right into it. All right, so this is our Wordle clone. Just type in some characters. And there you go. The basics of Wordle. Actually, I don't play Wordle, but apparently, according to my wife, this is actually pretty good. So uh, here it is. So let's start off with our starter kit. All of this, of course, is in GitHub, available to you for free in a link in the description right down below. Let's go take a look at the code. All right, so I've copied the starter directory into a hat dash Wordle. I'm going to run that right now. We'll take a look. All right, so this is the current state of the code. You've got Wordle at the top, and then you've got the available keys down below. Let's take a look at the configuration of the application. So over in Astro, we brought in Tailwind using that integration, Alpine and HTMX, and we just added those to the integration. We've also used a node server as our base configuration so that we're not doing the static version that we normally do when it comes to Astro. Every single time we get a request from a client, it's just running on our server, and that's how we're going to manage the actual game state. So anytime you make a guess, we're actually going to go just send off an HTMX request to the server to get an updated game board. So the server and the client are going to be doing a lot of work, and of course on the client, we're going to be using a combination of HTMX and Alpine. We got our home page. That's index.astro. Most importantly, that brings in the new.astro file, which is essentially our new game template. So let's go take a look at that. So up at the top here, we're importing the Wordle component. That's what actually renders our Wordle game. And then we're going to bring in some game utilities, new game and get game. These are utilities that manage the game state. If we want to go take a look at those, we're over in engine. And in the game file, we've got a couple of important helper functions. Check word that goes and checks whether the incoming word the incoming guess is part of our dictionary. We got a new game function that creates a random game ID and returns it, and it initializes that game and then stores it in our game file. Our game file is just a big JSON file that has the various names, the words, the guesses, and so on. Back in here, we got get game, get game given an ID, gives you back the current game state. And then we've got the update game function that takes a game ID as well as a guess and adds the guess to the existing game and then checks to see if you've won or not. If you're interested, there's also a Wordle engine over here. This is the one that actually figures out the guess versus the word. And there's even some VI test tests for this particular game engine. Kind of cool. I just want to make sure that it actually got it right. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to our components. And then in Wordle, I'm going to go and say that our debug mode is true. I want to be able to see the current word. And then I'm going to add in some code that will, if we are in debug mode, it'll go and tell us what the current word is. So let's go take a look. And there we go. So the current word is lens. Now, that just helps us when we're debugging so that we can go and type in stuff and make sure that it's working properly. Now, when you think about Wordle, you've got those six blocks of guesses. So I'm going to call those guess blocks. And we're going to go and create a new array of six items where if we have a guess, then we call calculate positions. That's going to give us each character and tell us whether it's wrong, whether it's in the wrong place, or whether it's actually correct. And then for the blocks that we have yet to fill in, we're just going to initialize those with no letter and call, say that the state is empty and then set an index. All right, now within this flex box, we're going to bring in our guess blocks renderer. That's going to iterate through every line of our guest blocks. And then within every line, we'll iterate over every letter. Let's go take a look at how that looks. All right, so looking pretty good. Now, what we want to do at this point is actually make it interactive. So as we type in, we want those characters to appear on that first line because that's the line that we're currently guessing. And then as we guess that last character, we're going to go do a post to the server and go check it. But in the meantime, let's go and just make it so that we can actually go and enter characters into that first line. So here we're going to say if the line is the current guess and we're not done with the puzzle, then we're going to use a form instead of a div. And in there, we're going to have some X data. And that's where Alpine comes in. X data is saying that we want that form to have some data associated with it. 
And then we're gonna use the Alpine template to go and use X4 to iterate over the letters in that data. And then inside of that, we're just gonna have that div. And that div is gonna have exactly the same formatting as we used below, but we're conditionally gonna say, well, if the current value is an empty string, which it starts off as, we're gonna make it a little bit darker gray, and then we're gonna put the value of that particular letter in there using X text. And this is all Alpine, all client side, really cool. Let's hit save, see how it goes. And there you go. So now we're rendering that top line individually. So the next thing we wanna do is handle adding a character to this. So if I type in a character, we want that to show up in the first value and then go all the way across. So what we need to do is create a little JavaScript actually on the page itself. So down here, we're gonna add a script tag. We're gonna define that that's is inline. That tells Astro that that's, don't mess with this. That's gonna go all the way to the client. Don't even think about this particular script. It's just what we want to be out on the client. And that's gonna have a function in it called add character. It's gonna take the event that's gonna have like the key code in it and then the data in that X data that we have in that form. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, is this a key? <laughs> and then if it is, then we're gonna look to see if there's any empty slots in our guess. And then if there is, we'll just add that letter at that slot. Now we gotta wire that up into our form. To do that, we add an Alpine event handler. So in this case, we're gonna say that we want key up, but we want it associated with window. So anywhere in our window, so the whole browser, if we get a character, we're gonna go and get that event and we're gonna go and give it that data. So that's dollar event is a special Alpine global event value and dollar data is whatever the closest data value is to this. In this case, that's that X data right up above it. Let's hit save and try it out. H -E -T -R. Oh, look at that, that is amazing. Now, when we hit that R, we want to go out and post to the server because now we have a full guess. Now let's go back and take a look at our form. Now we post this to the server, it doesn't know a couple of things. First, it doesn't know what the guess is because we don't have any form value for that and we don't know what the game ID is. So let's add some hidden input fields to our form. The first hidden field we're gonna add is the guess field that's gonna have the guess that we've just created. And we're, to do that, we're gonna specify the name as guess, and then we're gonna say that the value is bound, and this is using Alpine again, to the letters. And as the letters change, automatically it's going to update the value of this hidden input field. Pretty cool. And then the game ID is simply just the props that we got in from our Astro component. So we got our game ID, we're just gonna put it in there for the game ID. And then how are we gonna post this thing? Well, that's when we're gonna go back to HTMX and use some HTMX primitives. First one we're gonna use is HX post. So we're gonna say that when we post this, we're gonna to wanna to post it to slash guess. And then we're gonna take the output of that and target at the div that has the ID of Wordle. And as it just turns out, this top level div has the ID of Wordle. So easy. So what's gonna happen is as we make our guest and post that to the server, we'll basically just take the entire contents of this section and just replace it with a new updated HTML that has all of this baked into it. But let's go back to that form for a second. How do we actually trigger that form? We wanna say, well, when we got that last character, we wanna trigger that submit. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom event for that. So go back down here to the script. And we'll add a new function. And we'll add a new function called submit if full. And what this is gonna do is gonna say, well, if we don't have any more empty slots in our letters, then on the next tick of Alpine, we're gonna go and dispatch this custom event called do submit. Now, the reason why we wanna do it on next tick is because we want to give Alpine time to update the hidden guess field. So next tick says, okay, do all of your updating work in Alpine, and then once that's done, then call this function, which in this case is dispatching that do submit. So let's go back over here and make sure that we are one, calling this function. And the way that we do that is by adding an X effect. Effect is looking for any change in anything that has to do with the, in this case, data, and then calling that submit if full, if data ever changes. And then finally, we go back into the world of HTMX and add a trigger for this form that says, well, if you get a do submit, coming from the body, then go and trigger this form post. So let's give it a try. All right, let's take a look. I'm gonna do raise, my wife's favorite first word, and we hit the S. So yeah, there we go. So we've automatically posted to guess, and wow, that's pretty cool, right? 
So in Wordle, you can't actually guess a word that doesn't exist. I can't do, for example, ADSDGG like that. That's not a word. And so we should be triggering on that. So what we want to do is one, not allow that guess to actually go. And then two, put up a toast that says, hey, you can't use a word like that. So we're going to mark it as an invalid word. So let's go and first create a toast where you can go and put that. To do that, I'm going to go back into our index and I'm just going to add in a toast, which is absolutely positioned up on the left and on the top. And then over in our guess, we want to see if this is a valid word or not. So let's bring in check word. And if it is a valid word, then we allow that guess. Otherwise, we pass as a property to that Wordle component that we have an invalid word and we give it the word so we can put the word into the toast. Then over in our Wordle, right up at the top here, we're going to do what's called an out of band update. So we're going to give it a new div to replace toast. And we're going to say that we want HTMX to go and replace that div. Even though it's not within the context of our Wordle ID div, it's going to go and replace that in the DOM. That's why HX swap OOB or out of band. So let's try this. All right. ASFDG. Cool. So that is not a valid word and it appears there, but it's just going to stick around. So what we want to do is we want to use a little Alpine to actually make it disappear. So let's go and add our Alpine to get rid of that toast after a couple of seconds. So the first thing we're going to do is define some data, in this case, show, where show starts as true. And then we'll use x show to say that this div should be shown. And then we'll add an x init function that on a set timeout will set that show to false. And all we got to do is just say show equals false. Super cool. And we'll put it after 3,000 milliseconds or three seconds. Now x init is picked up by Alpine. And anywhere there's an x init, when the div in this case is first loaded, that x init is guaranteed to be run. So let's give it a go. And there you go. After three seconds, it disappears. But disappearing, eh, not so great. So let's actually make it kind of fade away. To do that, I'm going to use the X transition. And I'm going to say that the duration of the transition from showing to not showing will take 1,000 milliseconds. That's like going to do a nice little fade. So at three seconds, it's going to start the fade. And by four seconds, it's going to be gone. Set it again. And there you go. A nice little fade away. So now I've handled the case of an invalid word. Well, what actually happens if we win? What if we guess the right word? Well, over here in our guess, we know that the game engine has completed as a Boolean. And when it's completed and it's true, that means you won. So we send that in as a property to our Wordle component. So let's go back into our Wordle component and then just add some UI that gives us a try again button. Sit so down here right after the debug. Then we'll look to see if we're completed. And if we are, then we'll go and call slash new. And that will replace the entire Wordle with our new game. Let's hit save. Try it out. <laughs> Kleeg. All right, let's, let's win. Hey, there we go. You want to try again? Let's go. All right, there you go. A full Wordle clone, the code of which is available to you for free in GitHub and the link in the description right down below on the A hat stack. That's Astro, HTMX, Alpine, and Tailwind. Of course, that initial one, Astro, you could use any server you want. You could use Golang, you could use Rust, you could use Django, or Python, or Rails, whatever you want, as long as it handles outputting HTML back from these endpoints. And it's pretty easy. Of course, if you do take this example and replace Astro with Go, or Rust, or whatever you want, hey, Go put a link to your GitHub up on the Blue Collar Coder Discord channel, and we'll take a look at it. I would love to see that. In the meantime, of course, if you have any questions or comments about this video, please put that in the comment section right down below. And if you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell, and be notified the next time a new Blue Collar Coder comes out. Go over into the Blue Coder Collar... <sighs> you think I would be able to like say it by now?